So up until the 1500s, it was actually believed that the planets, the sun and the stars were all thought to be embedded in this transparent crystalline sphere-like objects that rotated around the Earth. Now, each sphere would carry one heavenly body, a planet moving in perfect circles. That was until this guy came along and shattered everything with nothing but his two eyes. Hey, space cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu, and this is the story of the last great astronomer before the invention of the telescope. This is the story of Tycho Brahe, but I warn you now, this story is very strange and you wouldn't believe me if I told you, but of course I'm telling you anyway. Meet Tycho, he's a 16th century Danish nobleman with a massive intellect and a massive ego. As a student in Germany, he got into this heated argument with another nobleman, Mandra Parsberg, who also happened to be his third cousin. So they were arguing over a math formula, though the specific formula was not recorded. This argument over their superior math abilities ended up escalating into absolute violence and they settled it the only way that they knew to be reasonable. They had a sword duel. And what was the result of this sword duel? Well, Parsberg got the better of the joust when he cut off the majority of Brahe's nose. For the rest of his life, Brahe proudly wore a prosthetic nose made out of gold and silver alloy, you know, because he was rich and he could do that kind of thing. He would carry his nose in a wooden box with the glue that he used to make it stick on. And remarkably, he wasn't one to hold a grudge. He actually ended up becoming very good friends with Parsberg in the end. So Taiho Brahe got interested in astronomy because he thought it would be amazing that a person would be able to predict astronomical events. It would be this impressive skill that he could bring out to parties whenever. In fact, Tycho was an avid astrologer and he would often do horoscopes for his friends, many of which turned out to be true. After 1566's lunar eclipse, Tycho announced that the eclipse foretold the death of a Turkish sultan. And a few weeks later, news was received of the sultan's death. But unfortunately for Tycho, it turned out that the sultan had actually died before the eclipse took place. That, and also he was very old, I think about 83. Taiho Brahe was renowned for his incredibly precise and extensive naked eye observations. Imagine just being a major astronomer without a telescope. In 1572, Tycho spotted a new star, a supernova, blazing in the sky. This was the infamous Tycho supernova, which you've probably heard of, but at the time it was a complete shock because according to old models, nothing was supposed to change up in the skies, up in the heavens. Tycho's meticulous observations proved it was in fact a distant star, not something local, not a local atmospheric event. And a few years later, he actually did the same with another observation, but this time with a comet. By comparing the observations, he found no detectable parallax, so the comet didn't move with respect to the background stars at a scale that would be expected if the comet were to be close to Earth, like inside the atmosphere or below the moon. Instead, the comet must have been much further away than the moon, meaning that it must have traveled through the supposed solid crystalline spheres that carried the planets. If the comet could move freely through the heavens, then that means the spheres couldn't have been solid. His findings proved that the heavens were not fixed crystal spheres after all. This was a major blow to Aristotle's geometric model of the universe, where Earth is the center of everything. The King of Denmark was so impressed with Tycho that he gave Tycho an entire island, and Tycho used it to build Uraniborg, meaning Castle of Urania, a fortress dedicated to astronomy. He and his team spent over 20 years building scientific instruments like compasses and sextants and recording the positions of planets and stars with unprecedented accuracy. 
Tycho published so much research that he literally ran out of paper. So his solution, as any reasonable astronomer would do, was to build his own paper mill. And he powered it by the artificial fish ponds that he had dug around his island. But even with all the paper in the world, his final book kept getting delayed. And this was because Tycho just couldn't stop adding to it. His personal life was just as eccentric and unconventional as his research. Though he never formally married, he actually lived with the mother of his eight legitimate children. So according to ancient Danish law, a woman who lived publicly with a man for three winters would then automatically be considered your spouse or your wife. Over the years, Tycho had many people visit his island and of course he would throw these lavish parties. His eccentric household was the stuff of legend. Tycho had a dwarf who he named Jep and he would have this dwarf sit at his feet at all his parties because he believed that this jester was clairvoyant. One time, Tycho had his two assistants sent to Copenhagen and on the day that they were meant to come back, the dwarf suddenly burst out during a meal, see how your people are laving themselves in the sea? And it turned out that his assistants had been shipwrecked. Also, whenever anyone was ill at Uraniborg, the dwarf would give his opinion as to their chances of recovery or death, and it always turned out to be right. Then there was his unusual array of pets, including a pet elk that he let roam free. It tragically died after drinking too much beer at one of his banquets, and it tumbled down the stairs, killing it. The elk, not Tycho. When the old king died, Tycho's fortunes actually changed and after falling out with the new king of Denmark, Tycho packed up and moved to Prague, where he became the imperial mathematician to the Holy Roman Emperor Rudolf II. It was there in 1600 that he hired a young assistant who you may also have heard of, Johannes Kepler. And just a year later, on his deathbed, Tycho handed over his life's greatest treasures to Kepler. This was decades of precise astronomical observations. That data became the foundation for Kepler's laws of planetary motion, which in turn paved the way for Newton's law of universal gravitation. So without Tycho's obsessive work, Kepler and Newton's breakthroughs would both have been impossible. And if you think the elk died under weird circumstances, wait until you hear about how Tycho passed away. In October of 1601, Tycho attended a royal banquet where he drank very heavily, but he refused to excuse himself to use the toilet because this was considered the height of bad manners at the time. So he held it in until he got home and it was just too late. His bladder burst, leading to a fatal infection. The death was so bizarre that there were rumors that he had been poisoned, but most historians think that he died of politeness, pride, and maybe one too many cups of wine. But anyway, Tycho was brilliant. He was messy and human. And this is a reminder that science is made by real people with strange lives. Anyway, that's all I have time for this week. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.